Now, it's somewhat common knowledge, but for nearly 30 years before Mac-10 gave Vlad TV an interview back in 2020, First Amendment was a relatively unknown group, unless you were really into West Coast hip-hop. And this is dedicated to the ones who ain't known. Why am I bringing this up? Well, there was some overlap with the prominent rap label that catered to Chicanos. Hey, what? what do I mean by that? Well, before Mac-10 was fucking with Manny Fresh, before he was in West Side Connection, and before his debut album in 95, he was part of the Inglewood-based group First Amendment. I was a, a pretty good writer, and like in the hood, I was, I was, my music was growing. Okay. Like I was in a group called First Amendment, you know what I'm saying? Like First my, Amendment, okay. Yeah. The group consisted of members B upon, Mac-10, Rat, who might be Squeak Roo, I'm not sure, and Binky, aka Binky Mac from All From The Eye. You niggas kicked up with the wild, wild west. All from the eye is the lick, west side is the click. Can't get enough of this gangsta shit. And the reason I mentioned this commonality with Chicano rap is because after First Amendment bounced around with a couple independent labels in the early 90s, they were under the guiding hand of the infamous Murray Brumfield, the owner of Familia Records, who also had a subsidiary label such as Hoodlum Records, as well as Kingswood Records and Family Records. Now, uh, I know you had Family Records, uh, Hoodlum, mm -hmm. and then Familia Records. Correct. Okay. And, and, and what were some of the artists that were on that record label? Okay, we had uh, First Amendment, which was uh, four guys and five guys in the group, okay. all from Inglewood. Okay. And uh, uh, Mac-10 was actually in that group. Really? So, yeah. So, before he uh, was with Q, he was in that group. And uh, yeah, a few good songs, you know. Okay. As a result, they make several appearances across different compilations that Familiar Records put out in the mid to late 90s, which is how I first heard of the individual rappers. Beopon had a few singles on some of these compilations, if you recall. And so, you know, we just met up. Uh, Beopon, uh, he sings Lockdown on the West Prison, you know. So me and him are pretty close. So, uh, you know, from there, uh, you know, they did some uh, songs. They're uh, on a couple of, I think they're on Southside Rider compilation. I had first come across First Amendment on one of the Southside Rider comps, and after hearing that track, I was captivated by the beat. Naturally, I ended up buying the single many years later when I found it on Discogs. According to Frank Contreras, aka DJ Tricks from the legendary Spanish Fly, he remembers when Murray signed them. He never, uh, he never had, a, he didn't have a late, he wasn't doing this until, until we started doing it. We were the first uh, group he had. That's true. Well, the first Chicanos, right? Because uh, he had like, uh, I think he had, um, what's his name? Mac 10's like first group called First Amendment. That, that was after. Yeah, that was way after. Yeah, I remember First Amendment. He had a label called Kingswood Records, which was like his stuff he was trying to do like in the 80s. But I don't think it ever... I don't think he ever did. I never heard what he did, but he would talk about that. And then, uh, so when we went to him for help, he was like, yeah, you know, I could help you guys get a deal and all that. And then he was just like, oh no, I'm going to put this out myself. If you're familiar with these releases from Familiar Records as I am, then you've surely encountered the compilations West Presenting and Worldwide from 1997 and 1999, respectively. If you own a copy of West Presenting, or ever Google the images of the compilation, you notice that Murray claims it was Mac 10's first recording. And then the West Present Mac 10's first song uh, is on uh, some West Present. Okay. Uh, rest the West in Peace compilation. Okay. And, and those are some of the first, the, the first stuff you released in. Yeah. Now I know Murray has earned a reputation for being a natural born bullshitter, but I love him for it. That song actually appears on First Amendment's self-titled maxi single, released on Black Empire Records back in Nine Deuce. The compilation Worldwide was mostly all Inglewood rappers and groups, with the exception of Essa Daz in there. So what I find interesting is that Murray had them under his label, and it's made me wonder what direction Mac 10's music could have moved into had he not been discovered. As my homie Westside Grimm said, Murray had a knack for finding talent. And uh, First Amendment, I believe their name, they're from Inglewood, that's Mac 10's group. Yep, yep, right before he uh, went solo. So Brum had them locked in way before, like he had them, you know, he had, Brum had a knack for like meeting artists and 
and he had a he had his ear to the street definitely obviously mac 10 went into have a mega successful career as part of ice cubes ensemble better known as west side connection but most of his former band members remained relatively unknown and continue to have singles featured on mary's imprints but who knows we may have gotten a completely different experience in west coast rap or maybe even some guest appearances from mac 10 himself on other chicano rap albums Ultimately, the closest we got was Mag-10 signing rapper Elboy to his label in the early 2010s. When it was already too little too late, Chicano rap was already on the decline. <laughs> this is another one of those instances where this could have happened in an alternate universe. I hope you enjoy this little segment of Words from the Wise, and like I always say, just chill till the next episode. Boom.